Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to make a flash movie that um, has a clickable button and plays a sound. Okay, so the, the sound that I want to play today is a common sound in small Midwestern towns around here. Um, it's the noon whistle. Okay, so I found this picture on the, the internet. I didn't have a good photo myself, but I recorded a sound a while back of a noon whistle playing. Um, so, I will import to the library this MP3 sound, the noon whistle. All right. So, it's in my library right now. Now, if I just want to play the sound, I can drag and drop this to the stage, and then when my movie starts, that, that sound will play. Um, but, uh, I, I want to make a button that you click to start and stop the sound. So it's, um, that's what I'm interested in doing. Okay, so first of all, uh, this is somebody else's photograph, and I want this to be mostly my work. So um, what I'm going to do is make a sketch, a quick sketch of this noon whistle. So I'll zoom in with the zoom tool and grab the brush tool and set the color to black because I just want to kind of outline this thing and set my brush size to something fairly small because I just want to create some outlines and I'm going to just do this a real quick and rough sketch okay so let's make a a, a new layer so layer one is where my my picture is and I'll just go ahead and lock that layer um, because uh, I don't want to affect that layer. That's just going to be my my reference layer, and so my actual drawing is going to be in layer four. We can you can rename it if you want, just to keep track of what you're doing in what layer. Okay, so select my my paintbrush tool, and I'm just going to draw really quickly, kind of an outline to get the general gist of what one of these things looks like. The drawing tools in Flash help to kind of clean up your work. They, If you get too wavy, they'll kind of straighten things out for you. It's a lot of artists enjoy drawing in Flash for that reason. You can adjust it and its sensitivity and things like that. So I'm just going to draw in a few details to suggest a noon whistle. These are also used to to uh, warn of tornadoes that are coming. The, the difference is one's a steady blast for noontime or f uh, a lot of volunteer fire departments are notified by this. One steady blast and then if it's a I think I have that backwards. A steady blast is a tornado and it, it alternates up and down if it's a fire. So well, let's just put a few more details in here like so. In this little piece here, this bracket. Something like that. Anyway, it's not perfect, but it, it gives you the idea and uh, if you shut the visibility off on the photograph you can see the progress that I've made so far okay um, so the next thing I'd like to use is the eyedropper you can click on it or you can see where the in parentheses it's an eye you should learn these shortcuts if you use this software a lot so you just tap I and you can switch to the tool that you need so the nice thing about this is when I do a sample I click and then it gives me the paint bucket automatically. That way I can just click again and it fills that whole thing in. Um, I. Now if you notice, let me undo that for you. See how there's kind of a gradient here? Um, so you might want to think about uh, doing a sample and do some shading with this. So I'll click the B tool to give me my paintbrush back and I'm just going to paint part of the that that color there and now I'll get K to get my paint bucket back 
and fill these in like so. And then I fill those in like that. So now, see how that gives you the nice shadow effect? That's, I like to do that sometimes. So just sample and fill. Something like that. Oh, let's, let's, it won't fill because it's wide open there. So I paint across the bottom and close that shape in and now I'm able to fill it. So you can adjust uh, sensitivity like if you tell it to close large gaps then the, the area you're filling doesn't have to actually be completely closed. But if you don't want it to behave like that then you can tell it don't close gaps. So you can experiment with that. I tend to like to have it close the large gaps and then it's a lot more forgiving on on how it behaves. Okay, Z zooms in. Now I can zoom in and I can get my eye to get my ink dropper tool. And oh, let's just go with that color there and fill that in. Fill that one in. Oh, it leaked out there, so I'll get my paintbrush and I'll close that off. And now I can fill that guy in there like that. Oop. Need to zoom in a little bit, it's too small. Alright, and then I can zoom out by holding the Alt key, clicking Z and holding Alt. And let's see, what color shall we go on the bottom? Something in that range like that. That work. And I'm going to, because there's kind of a line there, I'll go ahead and do something like that. And then fill those pieces in. And fill those in like that. So now if I zoom out, and I turn off the layer you see we've got a drawing okay there that's kind of floating in the air there we can see so if I want to come back in and and do something with that as well I'll just sample a color there and maybe fill that in like that okay so we got us a nice little siren drawing if I turn it off that's that's what it looks like you can tidy that up a little bit if you want um, but I'm happy with it for now so now I want to just delete layer one with the photograph completely I don't even want that photograph in this so now I've got a, a neat drawing um, that I can work with Now I want to turn, right now though, it's just artwork. It's just pixels. So I want to select it all and hit f uh, F8 or function F8 on the Mac. Because I want to create a movie clip symbol with this thing. And we'll, we'll call this uh, Siren. And that, what that will do is add a new movie clip object in my library called Siren. Okay. And, and now I can do things in code with it. I can interact with it. Um, I can delete it off of the stage, and it's still in my library. All I have to do to recreate it is drag it. I can make multiple instances of library just by dragging copies of it if I want. Um, and that is why when you put something on the stage, it needs to have an instance name. So click the Properties tab and give this an instance name. We'll just call this Siren Button. Okay, and I could name them one, two, three if I wanted to do multiple buttons like that. All right, so now it's now Action Script and Flash knows what specific object this is. Okay, so with the siren button selected on the stage. The next thing we need to do is um, link our sound to Action Script. Okay, and you there's you can right click it and go to Properties and and uh, set its uh, Action Script linkage up. But the shortcut is where this says AS Linkage in here. Just double click under that to open up a 
a, a window or a, a text box that we can type. Let's just call it whistle, like so. Okay, so that gives us a whistle object, a sound object called whistle. And we can refer to that in code now. Okay, so with your siren selected, you want to go to Window and Code Snippets uh, and find the audio and video folder and where it says click to play sound, uh, play or stop sound, just double click that. And it's going to open up a window that gives some code related to that siren button that we just made. It's going to listen for mouse clicks and if it hears one it'll send you down here to do something with it. Either to play the sound or if the sound's already playing, stop the sound. Okay, um, But the, the demo code that it gives, it's just a default sound that's somewhere out there on the internet. We don't want it to play that, we want it to play our sound. So leave the first part of the code in there, but instead of new sound, we're going to delete all of that. Be sure to leave the semicolon, that's the punctuation in ActionScript and other um, languages. Um, Java is another one that's very similar. You have to have that to tell it's the end of the code. But leave the pump, uh, the the semicolon. But where it says new, we're going to create a new whistle. And do the double parenthesis thing again because this is an object. It's a sound object. And once that's in there like that, we should be able to test this movie by hitting command or control enter and it'll pull up a, a, wind, a window with our button in it and click it and it should play the sound for us. There we go. Click it again and it stops. So that's, that's basically how to make a button that plays a sound.